Hello everyone, in this video I will be doing day 4 of Advent of Code 2021. Let's get ready for some programming puzzles. You'll see me doing the puzzles real quick and then I'll be explaining them afterwards. Alright, let's go. Part 1 is done. Time to go to part 2. Alright, let's go. So, it's time to explain the puzzles. Today's puzzle, I think, is quite a fun one, especially if you're into some more practical stuff. Um, so, it also requires some organizational skills, which are definitely going to be important if you want to get a programming job, for example. So anyway, um, today's puzzle is called Giant Squid. You're almost 1.5 kilometers, almost a mile, below the surface of the ocean, already so deep that you can't see any sunlight. So I love, I love that they include the, this detail. So the giant squid wants to play bingo. Yeah, there's a giant squid outside our submarine for some reason. And I don't know why we want to play bingo, but I don't know. I guess giant squid are good at having lots of tentacles and working stuff on a board. I don't know. So we are given uh, a bingo board. And if you're not familiar with bingo, this is how it works, at least in this version. There is a list of numbers that are called out. We are given this list beforehand. And then there's also a grid. And this grid is a five by five grid of numbers. So every player gets a board. And as the numbers are called out, you mark off numbers on your board. So for example, seven is called first. So seven will get marked off on everyone's boards. Then four, then nine, then five, and so on. Um, 11, you can see 17, etc. So on every board, these numbers are marked off simultaneously. After the seventh number is drawn, which is 24, one board gets a special property, which is that five numbers in a row are marked. Um, so a bingo board wins if a row or a column has all of its numbers marked. Prompt is find um, the board that will win after the fewest numbers are called. So basically the board that will win first. After you find that board, compute its score, which is given by the sum of the uncalled numbers times the last number that was just called, which is a bit of a convoluted way, a bit of a convoluted way of uh, doing a score, but I guess, I don't know if that's how like real bingo works, but you know, we'll roll with it. So what I did for this puzzle was to make a class. Now, if you're not familiar with object-oriented languages or if you haven't learned object-oriented programming yet, classes are a way of, I guess, making templates or, I guess, really at the base, object-oriented languages or programming is about objects. So this class is a kind of object called a board and we can use this class to create board objects. Uh, objects are useful because they like can package different methods and data together in a quite organized way. So that's why I used a class for this puzzle. Um, I think it makes my code easier to read as well. And overall, I think more organized. So anyway, uh, every class has a constructor method. In Python, that's the init method. Basically, what it does is when a class is initialized, when an object is initialized, this gets called. So we call it with an argument nums, and we set up this board, which I represented as a five by five grid of squares, and each square contains a number, and whether it has been marked or not as a Boolean. So that's the five by five grid set up whenever a new object is made. Um, I also made this method for debugging, and it prints out the, the board. Um, that's not really important, but I guess I'll show you a demo of it. So I added these two lines over here just to demonstrate what the bingo board looks like. You can see that after the first new numbers are called, nothing happens, but then slowly it gets filled in one by one. And yeah, I just used the, the library to uh, make it look cool. That wasn't really necessary, kind of wasted my time with that. I thought I was gonna have problems debugging this or whatever, but anyway, this method is not important. After that, we have a method to, actually, this is the first one I wrote, to mark a number. So it loops through the entire grid if the number is equal to the, if the number in the grid is equal to the number that was just called, then set its marked value to true. 
then I get, uh, then I got, then I made a get score method, which uh, at the end just takes all the numbers that are not marked yet and adds them together, multiplies by the number that was just called, which is an input to this function. Um, and then I guess this is a pretty important method. It detects a win within the board by checking every row and every column and seeing if all of them are marked um, within a single row or a column. So yeah, those are the four methods that I had within my board class, uh, not including the constructor. So pretty useful. Uh, I think it helped me organize my work a lot better. And then after that, uh, we have, I guess, just parsing the input. Um, Advent of Code is also a great way to learn how to parse text files, I guess, if you want to work with like data and stuff. It's really good practice for that. What I did was just take the first line and make it into numbers and then take every sixth line and cut out some stuff to just get the board. To split it up, I used regular expressions to match spaces because there can be multiple spaces in here between numbers. And yeah, after that, I just got all the numbers. Sorry, every board and then made board objects in this list. And then I run the simulation by going through all the numbers. So X is the number that is called in this current iteration of the loop. I mark X on every board and then I check if a board has won. The first board to win breaks the entire loop and print the answer um, from the winning board. So yeah, that's part one, pretty simple. Um, I mean, it's not that simple, joking. For part two, um, you realize that maybe the best strategy is not to win, but to let the giant squid win. And I think that is a very prudent decision. So what you actually want to do is figure out which board will win last and choose that one, because then whatever board the giant squid chooses, it will win. So uh, it tells you the example and the score of the losing board, I guess you could say, but they say it's the board that wins last, you know, positive language. So it asks you to find the board that will win last and compute its score. And I use the same class. I just copied over all this code. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have just imported from part one. Whatever, I'll make it redundant. Um, and then same thing over here. Parsing the inputs is all the same thing. Then running the simulation is different. I made a list or an array to store the indexes of the boards that won. So I go through all the numbers that are called again, call them one by one, and then mark all the boards. And if a board has won, then I add it to the list. I also had to make sure that it's not in the list already because you don't want to like say, oh, board two one, board two one, board two one, after, I realize that was confusing. Um, you don't want to say board X won after it has already won. So we just want the order they win in, preventing duplicates over here, and then we add that index to the list of boards that have won. After all the boards have won, then we can stop our loop, and then we just get the board index that is at the end of the list of order in which, I mean, the list representing the order in which the boards were won. We get the last board that was won, we get a score, and then we just print out that answer. And that's it for day four of Advent of Code 2021. I quite enjoyed today's puzzles. They helped me practice organization classes, you know, reading complex input because in future days, the input is probably going to get a lot more complicated. And hopefully you learned something from today's puzzles as well. As always, the code for my solutions will be in the description below. Make sure to check out that link. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I will come back tomorrow for day five. And thank you very much for watching.